Can you tell us about when you decided you would become the leader of the BC NDP and, and become Premier? What went into that decision? Well, you know, I think for everyone on our team, it was a big shock when John announced that he was stepping down. I think, you know, we knew eventually he was going to decide not to run again, but, uh, but it came much sooner than any of us expected. And, uh, and the priority for all of the MLAs on the NDP side was, uh, and the reason why we got into politics was like, we want to make a difference for people in the community, we want to do the work. And, um, and this uh, group process kind of evolved where people decided uh, to, uh, to come together and, and I was very grateful to receive the support of so many of my colleagues. And all of our shared goal was just to keep delivering for British Columbians, not to be divided by a, a very divisive leadership race. So I was really grateful to have their support for that work. Um, I had the support of my family, uh, my wife and my kids, as much as we can explain to a three-year-old and an eight-year-old what's going on. Would you, you know, you're a 20-something activist, would you have ever dreamed of being in this spot or was this your dream? Was this the end goal? I went to law school because, um, you know, I believe that the courts are really the only way to hold governments accountable to deliver for people in the province. You had to force governments to do the right thing. I grew up in an environment where governments uh, believed that the best way to support people was to cut the services that people rely on every day, that that was how you delivered effective results for people. And I just disagreed with that. I saw the human carnage that came with those kinds of decisions. And I believe that courts were and, and suing governments were the only way to get there. It wasn't until um, I had the opportunity to see how governments could be constructed when I was working in the downtown east side, how governments could be compelled uh, by uh, political uh, races, by participating in the political process, that I could help governments make better decisions. That was a big insight for me. They said that there wasn't enough time to scrutinize some of the bills that were introduced, including the housing legislation. I'm wondering, what do you say to that, since the NDP has criticized the Liberals in the past for doing the same thing? You know, I don't mind being criticized uh, for being in a hurry to address the priorities of British Columbians. You know, uh, if, uh, if I want to be uh, criticized for anything, uh, being criticized for moving too quickly to address these priorities for British Columbians, the work of the downtown east side, the strategy to respond to the crisis in that community, I, I mean, I've never seen the neighborhood look worse. I worked there 20 years ago, and, uh, and it was challenging then, but now with people on the sidewalks and the overdose crisis and the brain injuries and the mental health issues and the fires, it, like it is serious, uh, a serious crisis down there. And so I've had meetings with uh, leadership in Chinatown, uh, with nonprofit uh, service providers and community organizations in the downtown east side. Uh, and then just today uh, with government agencies and all three levels of government and First Nations leadership. Um, and across all of those meetings, the theme is how do we work together? How do we coordinate to respond to this crisis? You know, uh, the fact that somebody doesn't have their own washroom in their own place uh, is something we need to address. Like these buildings that are down there that are 100 years old that have failing wiring, failing plumbing, and there's a bunch of people with serious mental health and addiction issues uh, trying to get by. Like that's not a sustainable situation. You said that you're, you don't plan on calling a snap election. Is the BC NDP also going to? you know, have nomination races and nominate candidates in ridings? Yeah, I, uh, I'm uh, committed to the fixed election date. And uh, the reason for that is pretty straightforward. Um, I was all across the province this summer. I didn't hear a single person say, the one thing our province needs right now is an election. Uh, not even one person. In terms of the, the BC NDP leadership race, climate activist Angelia Potterai was disqualified from the race. Uh, have you made any efforts to speak with her or made any changes to environmental policy and to, and to draw some of those supporters? It's so important uh, to have young people uh, involved in our party, especially who are climate minded, who see the opportunity and the need for leadership in British Columbia. And so uh, I've been working with my MLAs uh, to reach out to all of the new members, whether signed up by my campaign or by Anjali's campaign, to make sure that everybody feels welcome. Do you ever regret singing on camera? You know, I, so one of the big uh, curses of my life uh, is, and there are very few, I have an incredibly uh, wonderful life, is that I love to sing and people do not love to hear me sing. 
So it's the, the gap between my singing ability and my love of singing uh, is truly uh, disturbing to me and to many people. Uh, and so uh, mostly I sing now just for my kids, uh, and they are my most ruthless audience. They're always, that is stuff singing. Uh, and, uh, but, um, but somehow I just keep singing to them. And, uh, and no, I don't, I, I regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs>